Professor uh, Clausus, can you uh, run the re-enlightenment program at uh, uh -huh. uh, New York University? Can you tell us a bit about what it means, first of all? Sure. The, the re-enlightenment project is, could be understood as an academic startup, in a way. It was a small group of people who felt that they wanted to be able to create new opportunities for discussion, and then particularly discussion about the situation we find ourselves in now, which is that we live and work in enlightenment institutions and follow enlightenment practices, but those are under real pressure for a whole set of economic, social, financial reasons. And there's a legacy then that we have to decide how to handle this legacy. And the project was formed to be proactive in that regard. That is, mm. it, would, it would figure out, it's RE colon, it's both about enlightenment, but it's also RE in terms of invoking what things do you want to renew or repeat or what things don't we want to. So this is, we see ourselves as kind of activists and trying to figure out what enlightenment will look like in the future. And what kind of activities do you actually uh, uh, undertake? I mean, I know about the, the enlightenment program where you teach undergraduates, but what is the re-enlightenment program actually? So we've done a number of different things. The format in which we do things is very important. We took an 18th century term exchange. It was first used in the 18th century to describe the first stock exchanges. And we try to um, mediate conversations between people who often wouldn't have the opportunity to be able to have to talk with each other at, at all. Um, these are, were initially held as invitation-only events in order to kind of fi form, I guess you'd call it a, a network of people who shared that sense of the importance of the, of the uh, legacy of enlightenment. So that's conversation. Uh, we also do ongoing seminars. There's been different ones on um, enlightenment and post-colonialism, enlightenment and the technologies of mediation, uh, and we produce scholarly output. Mm -hmm. So the you know the count so far is four books that have come out of the project in just mm -hmm. the past uh, four years as well. Mm -hmm. And we're here in Balliol College in Oxford this uh, this, this weekend, uh -huh. having a, a symposium here. And what do you hope to? get out of that? Well, we actually hope to get out a new kind of, of output, which is we, what we call rubrics or tools to think by, that these will go up uh, on a web page connected to uh, the number of web pages that the Real Enlightenment Project has constructed. And the idea is to begin to kind of turn outward and, and share those things that we've discovered as useful ways of thinking or tools for figuring things mm -hmm. out that are when what, what, what we term uh, the re-enlightenment mode. So it has certain kinds of touchstones, like the relationship between past and present, the focus on con connect connectivities and disconnectivities, and also on uh, uh, technological change uh, as well. So it serves both our own purpose, uh, it, it turns inward in the sense of how can we continue this work, but for the first time it's uh, you know, Balliol is a launch for a, a way of being able to make this more public and uh, accessible to a wider audience inside and outside the academy. Well, it's great having you here this weekend and thanks very much for giving us this time to talk to us. Thank, Thank you, you. Drummond.